There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> because once you're a spiritual aspirant, you're already committed to, we said, the spiritual will. For in, in meditation and all spiritual work, um, the field seems to be scattered. You look at the content of consciousness, you look at the mind and the events of the world, etc. Your life seems sort of scattered and sort of, that's sort of worrisome. Yeah, first I'm reading this book, then I'm reading this book, then I'm hearing this guru, then I'm going to that lecture. Uh, but one's spiritual commitment. So the decision of the spiritual will is what determines karma, karmic consequences, and determines uh, the fate of the spirit. People that choose ask me what, you know, what is the significance of it? And that, and I was explaining that the, the, you know, the universe, the entire universe is one karmic unity. Everything within this universe is related to everything else within this universe based on the laws which are of the nature of the creator. Because, of, because the entire universe comes from one creation, therefore, the entire universe is one karmic unity. Nothing is beyond the karmic oneness of all of creation. Consequently, whether people believe it or not, is irrelevant that one's destiny is already karmically dis determined. Even if when you die, you go into oblivion, and there's nothing more, that's already karmically determined, isn't it? You didn't determine that. So even though people deny karma, that's just a conceptual thing that they're talking about. What they mean by karma, when people deny karma, what they mean is reincarnation. Well, reincarnation is one thing, karma is another. We'll, we're going to do a lecture on that, so I won't go into it extensively.